Welcome to video three in the End Time Seminar series, The Dream of the Great Image, Daniel Chapter 2. Presented by End Times Official, the End Times Teaching Ministry. Narrated by Daniel. All scripture references are KJV. Viewers are encouraged to pause the video and search the KJV scriptures whenever necessary. Lord, open our hearts and minds to be taught by the Holy Spirit. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth and help us not to add to nor take away from the words of Bible prophecy. In Jesus' name, Amen. Daniel chapter 2, The Dream of the Great Image An Introduction in Daniel chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon dreamed a dream, but he could not remember the details of the dream. Therefore, no one could interpret the dream. To cut a long story short, God gave the prophet Daniel the same dream and interpretation, which Daniel was then able to tell the king. This dream begins a series of prophetic dreams and visions that hold incredible information about the past, the present and the future. Most amazingly, these prophecies outline what will happen during the last days, in the time of the end, during the days of the soon coming New World Order and beyond. Daniel Chapter 2 The Dream in the dream, the king was shown an image representing five kingdoms that would come to pass hereafter, from Babylon until Jesus returns to establish his kingdom on earth. We now know from history and scripture that these kingdoms are Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and today's global system of dictatorships and democracies that shall morph into the soon coming new world order. Here is what Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Daniel chapter 2, The Interpretation Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom, inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Now 
The prophecy begins to speak about the feet and the toes of iron and clay. The part of the prophecy that applies to us today and the near future. The days of the soon coming new world order. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. This is speaking about today's global divided kingdom, that of iron strong dictatorships and people elected democracies. The iron represents strong rule iron fist dictatorships like Rome was and like communist governments are today. The clay represents democracies that are elected by the people. Scripture likens people to clay, for example, Isaiah 64, 8. Therefore, iron and clay is a most fitting way to describe today's global divide of dictatorships and democracies. Now, back to the prophecy. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. In Daniel 2.42 is the prediction that there shall still be dictatorships and democracies that form the new world order under the rule of the ten kings and the Antichrist. In Daniel 2.43, the prophecy changes to focus on the ten kings who shall rule the soon coming new world order, but still using the symbolism of iron and clay. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay. This prophecy indicates that the ten kings will be unable to breed with humans. Perhaps they will not be totally human. We cannot understand this yet. Prophecy tells us many things before they happen, so that when they happen, we might then understand and believe. The prophecy continues. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand for ever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God of heaven hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Daniel 2, a closing commentary. History has proven the prophecy correct concerning the past. Therefore, prophecy is and will be correct concerning today and tomorrow. Revelation 17, 12 to 13 reveals that the ten kings shall be ruling in the days of the Antichrist. And Daniel 2, 44 informs us that in the days of these kings, Jesus is going to totally destroy their kingdom and replace it with his kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Coming next, the four beasts of Daniel 7. Thank you for watching and please share the knowledge. And God bless. If you're not yet a part of God's kingdom of love that shall stand forever, why not? It can all begin with a simple, sincere prayer. Yes, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. Please forgive me and come and live in my heart and fill me with your Holy Spirit and change my life for the better and prepare me for all that is ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.